So, first thing I wanted to talk about was the Irish Days Scion Exchange. Um, oh yeah, how'd that go? Um, it went pretty well. Um, I've been um, Amanda really helped me organize that, uh -huh. and Amanda O'Brien from the farmers market and the union school. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, and so she's in California right now, but we've been talking about it, and we both really agreed that it went well for the first year and for the attendance being down at Irish Days. Yeah. Um, so in total, it made $340. Um, after what we spent on rootstock in the space rental, it made $134. Um, but because we ordered rootstock so late, a lot of that had to be bought at um, regular retail price. And so if we do it again, we can order it in the fall um, yeah. for wholesale price, so there'll be a way higher profit margin on the event. Um, and so I was hoping there would be some other people who volunteered there here today who could give their feedback, but I don't know. What did you think? Mm. Okay. I thought it was a um, really good location. Um, I think that next time when they do it, can promote it more in advance. We were on a really tight timeline. Yeah, it was like six weeks from mm -hmm. deciding to hold it to holding it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what else? The demonstration was useful. Also, the weather hindered yeah. it a lot. There weren't as many people out and about. I think that helped the turnout for the for your actual event, though, in that you had the warmest space along That's the true. block. That's true. <laughs> Though some people just wanted to come in and like get warm for a second, and they didn't actually want to like come for the event. Yeah. You know, next time if it is warm weather, they could have a table outside. Mm -hmm. um, but then that would kind of switch up the whole pay to get in yeah. scenario. Um, I think I don't know. My big thing is I'm trying. To decide whether people think it should be held during Irish Days again, or if it would be better to have it just at you know on a regular weekend um, in the spring, because I think it did. I did hear from a lot of people after who said like you know I wanted to come, but I just got caught up in like the potato hockey or the yeah, house yeah. race, <laughs> um, and I like didn't make it. Hmm. So it, I like to get like feedback in the next couple of weeks to see whether we should move it from being separate from Irish days. Because I think people definitely want to hold it again next year. Yeah. Well, that's good, yeah. <laughs> do you do any fruit tree um, growing here? No. Um, we had a lot of them in our yard and they died off. During the drought? Or? No, they're in the years that we've had the property, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm like, ah. And I don't like to sound morbid or anything, you know, at, you know, at my age, you know, are they going to be able to, you know, bear fruit before I'm gone? Mm -hmm. So it's hard to, you know, but probably not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, be optimistic. Um. I'm just now kind of getting into being interested in gardening. Okay. Cool. Yeah, before my husband did it all. Yeah. You have um, a house here in town, or outside? oh yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, it's at, well, at North. Okay. Um, on Millview there, but yeah. Yeah, and then so is it a lawn, or do you have like um, an area that's already has soil down? <laughs> Hi. Um, well, it's it's yeah, it's lawn and weeds and weeds and lawn. no. <laughs> <laughs> My, My backyard has been overtaken with weeds. Mm -hmm. And like I say, my husband used to do that all and mm -hmm. and he was unable to do it the last couple of years or so. so. Mm -hmm. okay. Wait, we, yes. were, we just thought you were in Mexico. No, that no, was Montana. Close. Close. Yeah. 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 good. And oh. I just got back oh. last night. Okay. So. Tilly, not Tilly. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tilly's in Mexico. Yeah. Tilly was in Montana and I just got back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then, um, I don't think we've met No, you haven't. Oh, I'm Catherine. Hi. I'm Emmy. Hi. Um, we can go around and do introductions okay. if you like. Well, if you've already done it. Mm -hmm. Oh, we haven't. Well, oh, okay. since it's such a really browsing big crowd, I think we can do it again. I'm Tula <laughs> Kiono from Lake County Chamber. Say again. Tula Kiono, Tula nickname. Uh, technically live in Summer Lake and have a business work down here during the week. 
Um, and I'm Annie Harcourt. I'm the rare member, AmeriCorps member here at the hospital um, doing a community food assessment. Um, and then I'm Mira Norris. I'm the Community Health Improvement Program Coordinator. I'm Kurt Lipke. I'm the Managing Editor of the Lake County Examiner Newspaper. I'm Catherine. I'm an interest in clean food. Do you live here in Lincoln? Yes. Okay. And I'm Diane Clay. I'm with the Lake County Food Chair. Um, we were just talking a little bit about the um, Irish Days Science Exchange um, that we had a few weeks ago um, and how we think it went and what we'll do differently for next year. Um, Anybody else you? able to take that in? I didn't get to get down, of course, right. but since I was plugged in on planning and stuff, it's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. much today. Um, <clears throat> uh, Amanda said, is she going to be here tonight? Maybe? She's in California. Oh, okay. She said that it was a rousing success, and yeah, I think uh, it was, yeah. you had, maybe you told me that too, that the, you had a buyer from uh, Cedarville that came mm -hmm. over and purchased a lot of stock. And, um, and, uh, yeah, he did. He, yeah, he was from uh, Modoc County. He bought like $200 worth of good stock from us, so yeah. he was definitely our biggest yeah. customer yeah. of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Him and his three kids. Yeah, and he had, he had those three kids. Mm -hmm. well, it was really successful in my opinion. And it was, um, one of the things I remember Amanda saying is that um, we would need to come in earlier and have more volunteers to set up. Mm. Um, she felt like there wasn't enough time before our, the start time. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the next round, it'll just start to grow with people knowing more and more about it. So we were, actually, I was kind of thinking whether, because I heard from some people that there was so much going on with Irish Days already that they didn't really get a chance to come by. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to think of maybe whether next year it should be held during Irish Days or on a separate um, Well, I'm kind spring. of hoping that, that you slash we slash the county slash everybody um, kind, of, kind of centers on this as a, a, a topic, a program. Um, Healthy Food Week, Healthy Food Week, you know, day, weekend, whatever you want to call it. I, because we have such a viable um, <clears throat> farmers market in this small community, and I don't know if any of the rest of you have been in places where they are just really rocking and rolling and do amazing things. I've been to the one in Berkeley because yeah. my kids lived down there and went to school for a while, and. Um, you know, I mean, that's that's just a whole event in itself, and it's amazing. It's amazing product offering. It's amazing connection with the community and the providers. Um, and I am very, very pleased at all of our people who are involved in our farmer's market here, even in this little burg and in this, well, I, Kale's not here, so she's not going to throw darts and say, it's, and maybe that's difficult to grow things in, but, you know, our, our, our soil content and our climate and growing season makes it a bit of a challenge in yeah. comparison. Um, and I think we do really well. So I don't know if, if you know, a, a summer festival weekend or three days or something that's even more geared toward, you know, healthy foods or just to really help people understand about production of your own nutrients and, and pay more attention yeah. and understand what GMO really means. Right. You know, we hear it in the press and we get all worked up. But, the fact that you guys put, you know, heirloom cuttings of trees that have been in this county for 150 years of withering old orchards and old, old ranches and far-reaching corners of our 8,000 square mile county, I think that was phenomenal. And, and I think I'd like to see that get out again. I'd like to see people read more about it, see more of a little blurb, really understand what that was. Because so many people we talked to in the chamber, they went, Cyan, I said, right. no, not a Toyota car, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> I just, I, I would like to see it celebrated as its own thing, and I, I personally think you have viability. But, you know, as you say, they're, like all of us who are involved in any group that we're in, the volunteer thing is tough right now, and I keep saying, we've got to get the young people, and I know the young people are, you know, doing their cell phones or doing other things or not as involved in that anymore, but, you know, we've all got to eat, and, and it's really important, I think, that, that 
well, there's a lot of kids that adults don't pay attention to, and so let's pay attention to them and utilize their energy and mm -hmm. teach them some cool stuff. I mean, I don't know how to convince them that it's cool. I well, think it is, but. Um, today, Emmy and I were um, giving a tour to some guests that came for, they're interviewing us as a potential site for a food corps position. Um, which is like AmeriCorps, but they're more focused ah, on sweet. implementations school and school yeah. gardens. Um, so they would work um, with the schools and with the community on education. So if that happens, then that definitely, we can yeah. utilize that group and that energy that they'll right. create. And then the other thing is that we have the youth health advocates that also, they'll be a group of 10 teens that are, have leadership qualities that we can utilize for these kind of events, and um, they're going to be trained on nutrition and um, different health topics by a woman coming from Arizona from the Center of Integrated Medicine. Oh, that'd be awesome. Um, that'd be wonderful. I mean, yeah. what I'm seeing, guys, I'm, I'm, I'll be quiet because I've monopolized the conversation and I barely got sat down, but mm -hmm. in my business, um, you know, I'm, I'm a destination marketing organization at the Chamber. I support our chamber members and try to enhance um, healthy commerce. I uh, uh, support the quality of life in our community. And, you know, we, we have a lot of festivals and things, and, and we don't have a festivals association in Lake County, which I wish we did, because I don't really like to spend a lot of the time that I need to spend on doing what I do planning festivals, because that, to me, is something that lots of other people ought to be getting involved with. But, you know, Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But this topic is just, I mean, th th this is this time, even in our state, I mean, Farm to Fork is huge. Yeah. Um, what is this? There's another one, Farm to Fork and Farm to Pantry Farm or something. To pantry. Farm to Table, and I just saw one that was something to Pantry that they're doing in Portland. And huh. Where did you move from, or have you been here forever and oh. ever? From Oakland. Oakland. Well, oh. here we go. Yeah. Here's yeah. here's Berkeley that will speak to those wonderful farmers yeah. markets there. Farmers markets down there, you have to have your head examined to leave. Yeah. Once you leave, you're like, oh, I wish I never left. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I just set my tent up and I'll just be here all week? You know, or yeah. all week or whatever. Do you see any, um, uh, do, do, are you involved, do you attend, do you produce, do you uh, um, uh, frequent, um, do you organize in, in those markets down there? I just shopped. You shopped? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You were coming from a consumer standpoint, which is where most people are coming from. Right. The value in that, especially I see, is that consumers say, hey, this was really cool. Hey, I really like that. Yeah, that was, you know, whatever. That's what we need to know. But it sounds like you guys are on a great track with mm -hmm. a whole yeah. of food. I love it. And get those kids. We gotta get those kids busy. In, well, I could. Sorry. Uh, in terms of timing for it, the fact that there are grants being acquired for the schools around here to begin uh, school gardens here soon, um, plus the fact that the hospital already organizes a health day celebration through Daily Days, right. Right. it would, seems like. With so many, and this is a conversation Tully and I had. There's so many ancillary events that are being added to the Irish Days yeah. event. Some of them got canceled this year because of the weather, like uh, uh, the uh, tough truck competition they hold at the fairgrounds. But there's events that are being added that are dragging people away from the mm -hmm. main core crowd on E Street. Mm -hmm. It might make more sense to one get kids involved to show the fruits of their labor from their from their school gardens in June when you already have a crowd here at the hospital for Daily Days Health Fair oh, yeah. to focus more of a healthy food mm -hmm. addition onto a health fair that's already, already occurring. It seems like you'd have more of a receptive crowd interested in what you're doing <coughs> when there's already the focus on health through the Daily Days events. I think that could definitely be done with other food and gardening things. Mm -hmm. I think why we decided to do the Scion Exchange during Irish Days was that June is too late to do the grafting. And, they've already and that won. that, that yeah. was, was my yeah. question too, is is there a specific time of year when you have to do yeah. the grafting process? Because right. it, would, it would make sense to have, if you want to get kids involved, for them to be able to bring stuff that they just grew at their school garden to an event. 
Uh, you're still excited, you're just out of school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're left for vacations. But at the same time, growing seasons become a factor in, in all of that as well. Yeah, I mean, well, I think June could definitely, because that's when a lot of people are putting starts into the ground, mm -hmm. that could definitely work for other things. I think for the, specifically if we want to keep doing a scion exchange, that's going to need to be a little earlier in the spring. Um, I know that for Earth Day, they're doing a grafting event. Um, at um, Union School, so right. it's potentially it could um, does, be does, matched up with Earth Day instead of Irish Days. Does Earth Day get celebrated here in other ways? Not really. Not really. No. Mm -hmm. It should. It's really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It should. It could. I don't know if UC Davis grad, and it was really big when I was <laughs> down there in the 70s. So. Oh, you were? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's probably why I like you. Right <laughs> <laughs> on. Um, an another thing we have with the fruit trees that um, Amanda and I are trying to get out to people is that the Home Orchard Society in Portland are interested in coming down to this area this summer, um, and they would like to document some of the old orchards that are in existence and do some like um, tests to uh, determine the varieties, but they just want to know that people are here are interested in having um, their orchards documented. Mm. So we're trying to get people with old orchards uh, interested uh -huh. in having some people come down and look at them. And then once again, what's the good press on that? Kurt, do we do a flash? <laughs> um, do we? We would definitely do an article about that. You just need to keep us in the loop of what's going on. People assume that we're psychic and all sorts of things. Well, we just, what's going on, so. we just kind of started the thinking <laughs> on, so. I mean, I apologize because the babysitter just texted me. Could you repeat what they were um, offering? Oh, um, yeah, so they're offering to come down here um, and just test the varieties of trees and some old orchards where um, people wouldn't necessarily know. Oh. what the varieties are anymore because oh. they're, you know, 100 plus years old. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so, and they're interested in doing that this summer. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that happened because Amanda had gotten in touch with them um, for advice about the Scion Exchange. Oh, and another thing is if we hold the Scion Exchange a little bit, if we plan it to happen after their Scion Exchange um, next year, they will give us the leftover scions um, from that event. Oh, nice. So they, they won't be as like adapted to this environment as the ones that we got locally, but there would be more available. You could also say on your profit margin as well. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. we we didn't we only paid for rootstock. We didn't pay oh, anything okay. for scions. We just got those from the community. But what, there, kind of, what kind of rootstock did you get? Um, we got um, apple, pear, stone fruit, and um, cherry. What kind of apple? Um, it was, it was like Antonova. Okay, just curious. Yeah, and it was the kind where it could have been just grown into that tree too if it wasn't grafted on. Mm -hmm. um, and we ordered from Willamette and Rain Tree Nursery. Um, and, and one is in um, Canby, and I forgot what the other one was, but they're both in the valley. Have you been involved with that part of the process? In well, I was planning on doing a little bit, and I've been researching the rootstocks. It's sort of fascinating that most of the nurseries, you know, they graft on semi-dwarf, which I was very disappointed with. So the more I read up on it, it seemed very impractical to use anything but a very hardy tree for this sort of climate and soil quality. Mm -hmm. Right, um, yeah, we tried to get hardy yeah. rootstock. And if you're, I'm, Amanda has the, the rootstock that was left over from the event. I could give you her contact information if you're wanting to purchase um, some rootstock or get some from her. <coughs> um, are you planting like a, a garden slash orchard? Or? No, there's, there's an orchard there. It's not fantastic, but mm -hmm. you know, it's there. Mm -hmm. when, it, when there's fruit, it's great. Yeah. When there's no fruit. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I wanted, um, we have a, an old climb of plum tree. Mm -hmm. And um, it was dying, and then I managed to get it going. And then I decided the easiest thing to do instead of gathering the seeds in the future is simply to get some rootstock, do some cuttings, and try mm -hmm. to graft the plum mm -hmm. onto the mm -hmm. rootstock and see if it would take. <coughs> so I ordered 10. This is what happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. 
Are you on the west side? Or the third? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we're definitely determined to do it again next year. Um, and I think we'll try to decide whether to hold it as a separate event. I think that's what I would be leaning towards. Um, there is a National Food Day, but unfortunately it's in the fall. So it wouldn't. There could be some kind of events that would coincide with that. But they, didn't we do something about that? Either through CHIP or the hospital? Or Mayor had a proclamation or something. I don't know if that yeah, was Yeah, we, we did run a proclamation last year uh, about it. And I'm sure with, um, you know, the, the problem is that there's a day for everything. I think today is like a national chili day or something. And tomorrow right. will be a <laughs> national it was puppy something. Day or, yesterday. Or, yeah, yesterday was puppy day. So <laughs> yeah. when, when every single day on the calendar is delegated as a right. national something or other, it kind of dilutes the effectiveness a little bit of the holiday or, or uh, the intent behind it. But I, when you at least remind town hall at the time about upcoming events, when there's important ones, especially for local causes, they're really good about getting us proclamations in, in advance. We will have one in our next paper about the month of April. Because um, that's not just days, but also specialty months, too. So uh, if there are certain ones that you really want to bring light to, I'm sure we can press the issue with Town Hall to have them declare an official proclamation for it, or the county commissioners. Mm -hmm. And again, just that's a way to leverage mm -hmm. information yep. about the event and stir interest. Mm -hmm. And that, that, I mean, that, that's probably my biggest quest in everything I do is trying to figure out how to communicate with who, when, about right. when, yeah. on yeah. what medium, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a quandary, especially in this particular area. We can help promote, but I can't write the same article week after week after week oh, for six right. weeks leading right. up right to an yeah. event. So there's you know, only a certain amount of ammo that I can use, so you have to kind of, you know. Well, that's a bit yeah, of a campaign that we should, we should help feed you, actually, if we wrote our own press releases or if we have an organization to plug into that has some prep on that already that we can kind of rework and then, you know, feed you guys. And there, radio there's stations. ways that we can work around it where we focus on different aspects of of things. If something's big enough, we can split it into multiple articles and focus on only specific areas. Mm -hmm. uh, we just did that with Miro over the past month or two because she had several different programs launched at once. We were able to do different articles on each. Mm -hmm. uh, in the lead up to Irish Days, we had multiple articles where we focused on different aspects of Irish Days rather than just doing one big article at a time. Ooh. So, okay. depending on what, what it is, we can split up, but I can't just week after week after week basically write the exact same article. <laughs> when coffee space is finite. Sure. Uh, and there's no National Food Day, but there's a ton of food days related to foods. There's National Cream Puff Day. Yeah. Isn't there? Yeah. There's, there's, there's a food day. Oh, really? That's like healthy yeah. I'm not seeing it here. I, we did big events at it. Oh, you I have? Yeah. There's also National Hot Sauce Day. I will be celebrating that. It's <laughs> 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 Yeah. Um. Well, and in Oregon, too, because, I mean, obviously the Willamette Valley has different types of growing capabilities than we do, but mm -hmm. the, the whole Oregon plug is all about our diversity in this state with, with amazing, you know, recreational opportunities, the proximity to the coast, the mountain ranges, the growing regions, mm -hmm. the food, the beer, the bicycling, all those kinds of things. So. Um, it is something that the state tourism agencies push a lot, especially the food stuff, and I would just love to see a farm to fork out here. Right. I would just love it. Yeah. Uh, well, they, they are actually going to, Union School um, is planning a, a farm to fork fundraiser yeah. for their garden you program. Yeah, um, they? The fall. This year. Um, as far as I know, yes, but maybe, you know, that, you know, that can change. And is Amanda heading that up, or is somebody mm -hmm. working with her? Okay. I think there's, you know, there's always a good chance that it's Amanda who's doing something. Mm -hmm. Well, she'll be doing something. It's just 
Well, just if there's a food. Okay. Okay. But we can look it up later for the food day. But I think oh, yeah. that it's, it's telling that yeah. it's this October group. 2nd. It's October second. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which that's Marianne's birthday. Um, oh, oh, nice. And that's food day and Gandhi's mm -hmm. birthday also. Nice. Um, but that would be a really good also opportunity for restaurants in town. Absolutely. And then if there's a harvest, yeah. I don't know, it might be too late. But um, with kids growing in the community gardens, out at Union, and then if we get this one you know, made that's nearby, um, there could be like a competition Absolutely. for different vegetables yep. with growers. Um, and then through that can be promotion of like you were saying, um, what is GMO, why it's bad for you, and nutrition related education. Mm -hmm. The uh, previous weekend to that is Oktoberfest, um, which would be a good time to promote or tie in since that is a harvest celebration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one, one thing we had talked about, uh, Amanda and I had talked about, would be since the Scion Exchange is in the spring, holding um, like a fruit tasting event in the fall mm -hmm. where you taste different apples and local fruits. Yeah. Um, so that could coincide with that. Mm -hmm. Is canning a big deal here? Mm, not so huge, but there are still some people that do it, and I think that there mm -hmm. are some young people who would like to learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I know, you know, lots of folks have sort of put away their jars and said, "I'm not doing this anymore." But there are a lot of young people who are getting back on board. And of course, you know, I'm sure Amanda's all over that. Yeah. I'm still enjoying her fresh milk. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I'm so excited! I'm gonna freeze it. It's wonderful. <laughs> Because milk just tastes stupid nowadays. I don't know what's in it, but it's not like when I was growing up. <sighs> okay, well, um, I think if we want to talk, the second thing I had on here was to talk about the community garden project. Hello, Hello there. Hello. Hi. Hi. Give yourself to some grapes and crackers. Oh, I, I had to bring my lunch. Okay. But yeah. thank you. <laughs> share this with everyone so I've got two one one man who lives in Klamath Falls and he owns a property um, he says it's a 135 by 50 foot lot by the mill wants to use it as a community <coughs> personally I think that's not a great location and that we should switch we should stick with this closer one but he's looking for someone to grow on that he says if if there's not interest, he's going to use it to grow lavender. Mm. Nice. So that could also be really nice if we have yeah. a lot of lavender. Um, he said he he's a chef um, in Klamath, and he is running a community garden there. Is he from um, over here? You know, he, he, I don't know if he, I just talked to him on the phone today, and I'm not sure if he's originally from here, but he's definitely living in Klamath currently, but has this property here. Is he a young person? He's not uh, youngish. Mm. Do you think you know who it is? No, no, no. I just, yeah. I'm just amazed. Yeah. yeah. I'm just amazed. Oh, I'm gonna grow lavender over by the mill. So. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> it's an old mill. Well, yeah. You know, there's lots I of mean, holes. But I wanted to make a recommendation. I'm not gonna stay here any longer. I need to go home. Um, I would recommend you grow your stuff. Probably, you're from the gardening community here. Pardon me. You were from the gardening community. Yes. Well, um, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but my opinion. Here's my opinion. You want to make sure you have clay in your soil. If you don't have clay in your soil, you're not going to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. Or you're going to have to really work at it, and young kids will mm -hmm. not want to be disappointed so quickly, yeah. so many times. Mm -hmm. yeah. So make sure there's black clay in the soil, and then you clay can in the soil. soil. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's certain places around here where there's lots of black clay. Just in this area where Lakeview is, there's uh -huh. none out on West Side. Mm -hmm. No. Um, and all you have without the clay is sand. Yes. So you have to have the clay. So what? So I just make a recommendation mm -hmm. when you're looking for this garden for the kids or what have you, mm -hmm. that you have clay. Thank you. Have to bring in more clay. Yeah. 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 Um, um, and the clay, the clay, the black clay has got something very special in it because <clears throat> kitty litter from the store doesn't cut it. It doesn't absorb. It doesn't work. Yeah. F on kitty litter, even yeah. though it's clay. And there is clean kitty litter, but it doesn't count. Yeah. You need to have clay that's here. Locally. But what does the clay do? I don't know, but it works. 
Where I don't, I, it's just in the ground. It's it's around here. It might be washed yeah. off from the mountainside or what have you, but it's black and it's clay. clay and yeah. it makes your soil have some of the minerals and it helps hold water. Um, and I think there's something special with the clay. I don't have proof of this. Mm -hmm. It allows the plants to be able to survive with this mm -hmm. high altitude sun exposure. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure about this. But it's just my yeah. FYI. Okay, well, my experience. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for stopping so. by. Could I um, get your contact info um, before sure. you leave? Yeah, I'm just going to move on. Um, just, you can keep me moving. I'm just um, supplier. Oh, okay. Thank you. So we'll have to find some black white. Yeah, sounds yeah. like it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna look it up. Um, and then I think a lot of you guys are probably familiar with the greenhouse north of town. Uh -huh. um, so half of that isn't being used right now. Um, oh, really? And the gentleman that um, owns it um, approached me because he's interested in leasing it for a community garden. Um, which is nice because it's a geothermal greenhouse, um, but it is two miles north of town. So that is kind of far for a community purpose, but it's unfortunate because it is sitting. But it's still in, yeah, it's still in. Huh. And it's so, and it's got, so half of the facility is the greenhouse, the garden center. Right. And then half of it is empty, and it has raised beds with soil, and there's actually uh -huh. chard growing in it right now that apparently has been neglected for a year. And it's still right. there. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, and it's pretty ready to go. It's just so far out of town um, for a community purpose. But I'm trying to find something that can go there that can, you know, utilize that space. You should like send out a little notice to all the people on your email list. Maybe somebody wants to you. Yeah. And then it could be a place to do starts. Um, if Amanda, Amanda wants to get a head start on yeah. growing. That's yeah. a good idea. Well, and it is year-round, and there was actually a lemon tree in there that oh, was wow. producing lemons. Oh, the greenhouse? Yeah. Awesome. Um, I mean, it had like two on it, but... And then, um, we didn't... Can you read that? Wouldn't you have to lease that from them or something? Yeah, so, and he said he'd be flexible on that, but we didn't, like, he didn't give me any, like, hard numbers about. Uh-huh. They recently yeah. changed ownership. Oh, um, did it? Andy okay. Peavy was the person who was running the greenhouse. He moved to Hawaii about six months ago, and he died about two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and yeah. before he left, he sold it to, I'm blanking on the person's name. Do you remember, Julie? Who, uh, who took over for it? Wait, well, so you mean so Andy Andy Parker's Andy that Parker, you? not Andy Peavy. No, I, I thought it was Andy Parker owned it. I don't know if Andy oh, Peavy. Oh, Andy Parker. He moved to Texas. Okay, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think Andy Peavy was involved in the <coughs> operation of it. Yeah. Um, so I just gosh. met with him last Jose? week. So okay. he's so it's it's from what I understand what he approached me with it is. Andy Parker is the current owner of the building. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, and he's yeah. leased um, half of it to, I think his name is Jose. I think it is. Um, yeah, it's Jose. Um, yeah. To run that's, the garden center. Yeah. What's, what's Kathy Miles' mentor girl? Sammy Withers? No. Jessica, Jessica. No, the, the, the mentor kid. Oh. Um, beautiful, weird gal. Isabel. Uh, Iris Herrera? Iris Herrera. Yes. Herrera. Yeah. Isn't it yeah. Herrera? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. He was running part of it or? He, yeah, he runs the garden center half, oh, okay. um, and half of it. Um, so who was Andy PB? He was involved in the operation, but okay. he, he's deceased now. He died okay. last week. Um, yeah. That's too bad. Okay, I wanted to make okay. sure that the person I met with had a yeah, but Andy years. Parker, I'm sure, is the one that owned the property. Yeah, yeah. and he, he does live in He's Texas. He's owned it for years. Yeah, since the 70s, yeah. I believe is what he said. Um, he does live in Texas. He's coming back and forth pretty frequently now. Mm. Um, and they live out of town now? Yeah, in Texas. Because okay. him and his wife live in Texas. In Texas? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But he's coming back and forth like almost yeah. every month. Huh. Well, I know he has property here. Mm -hmm. And he said he doesn't think it'll work for a commercial business because there's not enough of a market. I don't know if that's actually the and case. He said that? Yeah, but no. then he thinks it would work for a community garden. Mm. Well, well, it's not. It's too far. That's yeah. what I think too. 
but and I don't think it might not necessarily be true that it couldn't work for a commercial mm -hmm. operation if someone was interested in it. Mm. Totally. Well, we do have a very large greenhouse operation that's currently being built to be in town, Forty uh, Second Group. That's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, I just talked to Jared today, and part of their operation is going to be a massive research center to determine ideal crops and. Uh, um, how to get the best growth out of high altitude regions such as this. So they may be doing research on black clay awesome. in there to determine what works best. Who are they going to be partnering with? Um, Jerry is the CEO of it. Um, I'm not sure on who their partnerships are because it's kind of changed over time as the OLCC has been altering their requirements um, mm -hmm. regarding the cannabis grow operations. Right, right. I wonder if they're Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yes, yeah, I knew they were going to be doing like some experiments, mm -hmm. but I thought it was just going to be with cannabis. And and initially, they were crops. going to also be growing uh, high altitude yield commercial teas, peppers, and some other products. Right. OLCC, uh, in yeah. part of their regulations uh, regarding commercial grow operations, said that it, it, it has to be a homogenous crop. It can't be multiple things that oh, they're growing. Oh, really? So, oh, oh, yeah, that, that's oh, what's oh, that, I, uh, I disagree with it, but that's what the OLCC so, yes. has said, is that anyone who's, who's going to get a commercial grow license Ooh. for marijuana can yeah. only grow it on that property. They cannot grow any, any other crop. Huh. Oh. They want another monoculture. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. They, 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 yeah. they don't want biodiversity, apparently, in, <laughs> in uh, a commercial grow <laughs> operation. <laughs> so, but that doesn't mean that their operations out there are not also going to incorporate extensive research in um, best use of high yield, um, you know, high altitude crops for this type of environment. Which they wouldn't be selling, so right. it doesn't, I got you. Yeah. That's really mm. annoying. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, I was really disappointed when I saw that that press release come across my desk. Yeah, that is. Mm. Did they give any any brief watery reason in that <laughs> political <could be> mask? <laughs> political <laughs> problem. Yeah. 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 But, because they, they can. They, there's still, they can. There's still yeah, a yeah. lot of people that think that marijuana uh, legalization is the final sign of the apocalypse and will do anything to fight against it. So. Okay, whatever yeah. be that as it may, but what is the logic saying you can't grow a pepper in the same plot as the pot? You <laughs> make it less appealing to grow pot if you have to only grow it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think they're trying to, to keep oh, the, the, the oh, licensure of yeah. it separate uh, okay. in yeah. terms of uh, the, the regulation for it versus yeah. you know normal agriculture crops, yeah. at least for the time being, because it, it is still very preliminary in granting licenses, Ooh. and so I think they want to kind of see how it goes for a year or two before Can they start both? to allow it. Possibly. Yes. I mean, the OLCC is still determining their exact regs at, at this point, and so it's all subject to change, which makes it really difficult for people like the 42nd sure. group to establish their operations while they're changing the rules mm -hmm. as they go. But yeah. Which you said, Pam, because they can't. Yeah. That, that's the circumstances. Yeah. If you think about like community receptiveness, if they had a portion where they were feeding the community, in a community like ours where we, we're not producing, our own vegetables that but much. So they're trying to do that. Right, they're Whether trying to do that. it seems to be a mask or not, it's still a positive thing. So why yeah. would you say don't cut they, their nose off to spite their face and oh, you're just a pot group. So we, right. you know, we totally don't want you to so it because we like peppers, but we don't like pop, so we don't like you at all. Mm. Come on. Yeah. There, there's still a certain stigma to it, and I think oh, they're, sure they're trying to keep a certain drug versus food separation in terms it's of their organic mindset production. Yeah, people, yeah. But what you do with the finished product is a whole other process. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good Lord. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to, to kind of get it out there that there are those two properties that people are interested in using for community gardens, even though I think personally that the space behind the hospital that already has the fencing and the tool shed yeah. and the closer location is a much better option. Those do exist. Um, and Are you moving off of the school property idea then? Um, I don't so know thing, but our, utilizing what exists. I mean, I think our idea is to kind of, that's an easier project. Yeah, like yeah. Bakery. Um, <laughs> and to try to build community interest mm -hmm. based on that 
um, while working on the larger mm -hmm. yeah, so project. Right now, Emmy um, is starting to write a grant yeah. that would um, pay for the facility um, that would be placed on the school property, mm -hmm. the greenhouse. But one of the big things with this group, and I, I wish everyone else was here, is that we really want that drive to be from the group and not from like one person. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. That's right. That's and so we thought it's wise to start with this community garden with the fundraising event like the Scion Exchange and others where our group starts to become more um, strong and yeah. we're working together and we get that bond going and then we can tackle bigger and bigger issues yeah, that's good, together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and I think, I don't necessarily see any reason why a, a greenhouse and garden beds out here can't exist together. Yeah. So I think right. this, yeah. and it, it would seem a shame to waste this property that is almost already ready to go right. as a garden Absolutely. and just needs a little bit of um, yeah. you know, and that it's only like what three months mm. that we can throw out there, anyway. So, yeah, yeah. might as well get to it. <laughs> Fencing is uh, also extra important right here because of the amount right. of local deer yeah. in, right. in town. That, and that's, uh, that's why I think you know, don't want to waste the fence that yeah. is there either. <laughs> right. Right. Especially because, yeah, that that is one of the major expenses for a garden because it is absolutely mm. necessary. I thought, yeah. yeah. I'm not on there either. No. Mm. Yeah, that was the checking for. Oh, time. yeah. So yeah. there's the, yeah, there's two different things. So okay. one's like a meeting attendance, and one is if I don't have your uh, contact information yet. No. Oh, okay. Um, and so I for funding of this space, since that's kind of a smaller project, um, there I found a couple things for um, seed donations as well as the Grange um, for like equipment um, where they have forms that you can fill out and get funding. Um, I was wondering if you guys would have any ideas for like local businesses or organizations. Well there is a Westside Grange. Yeah. Well this is like the Grange co-op business. Oh okay. Um, thing. But you know though Kurt, that's the good point. There are still some folks, I still cry because they bulldoze the east side bridge and we pine creek all the I know it. Uh, see, good, thank you. I, some people are like, ah, it's all rat trap full of nails and broken boards. I'm like, no, oh, wasn't we used to have parties and oh, yeah. showers and the Grange bed and all the aunts and uncles marched around with their Aww. staffs oh, yeah. and hooks and things. Like that. Yeah. But back in the day when that was what agrarian communities did to organize. There are still some of those people. There is one in New Idaho, a building. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be cool to get those people back on board too because they used to do stuff like that. Granted, they're probably in their 80s and maybe they don't want to come out, but I think it'd be cool to, I think they do. Mm -hmm. And if those edifices exist, then edify, I don't know what it would be. What does that mean? What does edify mean? Well, edify means to teach, but an edifice is a building, so I was kind of mixing oh. that up. But anyway, that's all right. The, 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 the critters, the buildings exist where these sorts of things were, were vital information back in the day. Mm -hmm. And that might be a fun, you know, plug into our little regions because, you know, West Side is kind of its own community. New Idaho is kind of its own community. Mm -hmm. It's still Lakeview, yeah. but it's out there where growing things happen. And, you know, why not have an event? At, you know, this place or that place kind of rotated around mm. during a month or two or over a few weeks period or during the harvest moon or yeah, yeah. You know, when it says plant or don't weed or whatever it says, I don't know, you know, those kind of um, And so do you, if there was a community garden, do you think that the food chair would be interested in having a, a bed where um, people from the food chair or volunteers that you guys have could come out and work on it and then that would go to the pantry produce? That'd be cool. I'd like to, but I don't know right now mm -hmm. how our um, organization is. I know it's kind of been kind of kind of been falling, falling apart a bit. We're trying to yeah. to regroup. Mm -hmm. Right. So well, and I still like the opportunity without it being pressure in yeah. any way, shape, or form, but. The opportunity for, I don't know what you call it, clients, I don't know, folks that, that utilize the food share to have the opportunity to get involved in stuff like that. Because, uh -huh. you know, again, I think, Emmy, you brought up earlier about 
past history in community gardens where you've got some people who are really gung ho yeah. and they take care of their stuff and some people who don't and they've got weeds and yeah. other people's stuff and the ones who are gung ho wind up doing everybody's and then there's hardship but um, just studies and, and you know, school projects I've heard about kids kids who are in in after school detention you know they're like shooting spit wads at each other not doing anything else or there because I have to be yeah. and a teacher who's bright enough to figure out that these kids need to do something besides sit on their butt and be punished. It's like, we're going to the garden. I and at first, awesome. the kids yeah. are like, eh, this is stupid, eh, I'm not going to do that, eh, I don't want to get dirty. Mm -hmm. And then before you know it, by the end of six weeks' time, yeah. they've learned how to cultivate, they've learned how to take care of something that they grew, yeah. and exactly. then yeah. they can eat something that they nurtured, and then they can give it to someone else. But yeah. they did it, and it was just a whole huge Self process of yeah. exactly of building self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And so, with I, I just think with the food share, you know, and again, it wouldn't be something that like you know we give you a loaf of bread and you got to go weed for an hour. You know, you, yeah, you're right. not going to get into that part of it. No, but to make that option available, we'll just see what happens. You know, just yeah. just see what happens because you can keep track of you know maybe a percentage of your uh, your distribution. Uh, clientele that that does work in the garden, you know, and even if it was like five percent of the people yeah. that come and get something, it's like there is some some give back, right. and, and it'll grow. Yeah. It, it will continue, I'm sure. And I mean, at the survey that I've done at the pantry so far, um, a good amount of people did indicate that they would be interested in having a community garden space. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, that is theoretical when they check right. that box. Yeah, that's a big, big, big term. Okay. Having a community garden space, mm, what does that mean in Quad of Dirt? Mm. Well, that's what I was just going to ask. Now, yeah. do we just go in and plant something or everybody have their own little row? Or I don't understand. Right. I've well, never so, had one. So that's problem. something to talk about. So what we um, had thought so far would be, um, when in, these, in previous meetings when we've discussed it, would be to have individual beds. And that's because mm. when, yeah. when it was run by Rotary previously, it was all... Um, there were no individual beds, so you would just go in mm -hmm. and you would work. And the problem was that then there were two people doing all the work, mm -hmm. and that's why that project oh, fell apart. And so we were thinking that if there, people rented their individual bed for the season, then you have more ownership over your individual space versus you're just coming and working for a little bit on one plot. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so the, the decision to make there would be whether to charge fees for beds, um, small fees, or whether to have them be free and to seek totally grant funding. Um, so the, I think people would feel more of an investment if they paid, paid a fee, but that also might scare yeah. some people away. So there would be, could be a low fee and draw back. Yeah, it could yeah. be also a sliding scale, like yeah. the garden there you go. that I yeah. did, you know. Yeah. And yeah. people can be honest and real yeah. that if they're able and to afford, afford it, yeah, add some more to the box. You know? Yeah. So what what do you guys have an idea of what you would think would be a good minimum fee? Are you going to do this a one time thing? I, I would say one plot, one so. once a season. Yeah. Is how most community gardens. How big a row? Um, I mean that would depend. Yeah. Right. How big an area? For, so plot. probably what you would consider a standard garden bed would be like these tables or mm -hmm. you know that's so yeah saying it was this big mm -hmm. two by six so what a reasonable fee for one season of use mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's about right and so if it's if we're starting out out there uh -huh. um like with ours in portland it was we just charged twenty dollars uh -huh. um, so what was the sliding scale for that? and then if people couldn't afford we'd say do what you can but the mm -hmm. mac what we would ask from people who could was just $20. Yes. Granted, all the people we were working with were low income, so mm. you know we assumed that. Uh. Um, but it did make more investment, and also because of water. Water was mm. a big cost. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, Before you set any sort of final price, it would probably be smart to figure out what sort of rental cost you're looking at for taking over half of that greenhouse so that uh, you can then determine total amount of plots available to determine how much you, you need to charge. Yeah. It could be a losing venture if you don't charge enough to compensate for the amount of rent that you're going to have to pay 
for taking half that greenhouse. Uh, yeah, I think this this would be for the just the oh, for, for the plot, for the plot. Okay. So the yeah. two ideas, Kurt. So we're all on the same page. Yep. Starting out here with the community garden that had been developed a few years ago, mm -hmm. and that's our group kind of starting to work together. And um, in the meantime, Emmy and I are working on grants to purchase a greenhouse that will eventually, okay. after we go through the school board, <laughs> that's important to note, um, would be on a school property nearby, and that would be for the entire community and school. Yeah. And, and greenhouse covered, which would mean we could use it year-round, hooked up with geothermal. Now, doesn't the school already have, have a greenhouse there? The high school has a greenhouse. Um, it's right now. It's just used for plant starts by FFA. Yeah. Um, because they they don't have the staffing to do it in the summer, and it also gets a little. They're worried it gets too warm in there in the summer. Um, I don't think there's fans or anything. Is there? There's I'm not. There, there, there are fans. fans. Are there fans? Yeah. 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 Um, and so, out, so yeah, right now that isn't available for something like a community garden, and it's not. Um, it's not set up for like beds, it's tables, because they just do starts in there. Um, yeah, they've been talking about relocating that as well, because mm -hmm. they've been, well, there's been on and off discussions about developing a solar plant in that general vicinity. Um, I think that may be on hold with the construction of the bus barn and the development of the new solar plant out in Bly, mm -hmm. um, but there have been discussions of, on some of the school property, developing a solar plant, uh, which may necessitate relocating that greenhouse mm -hmm. further off site, yeah. which may mean that it may not be as much use uh, for FFA kids the further away it is from actual school location. I wonder if we could talk to Mr. Cahill and the board about you getting that greenhouse instead of having to go and purchase a whole brand new one. Well, but I think that I don't want to ruin the FFA's source of funding mm -hmm. um, because, you know, it is used right now for... If, it's, if they're planning on not using it. Yeah. Yeah. Something to talk about. <clears throat> That's it. still kind of up in the air a little bit. I, I think they're waiting on the solar company to make up their mind, but it's been okay. discussed extensively at school board meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, interesting. And if we get that food court position, it'll be phenomenal because they'll be trained, I mean, that'll be their whole world. <laughs> we'll be implementing all what Emmy has come, you know, to find out through her assessment. That'll be the implementation part of it. There is, or I guess also was, a smaller greenhouse out of Union that was donated by the BLM. However, this winter it was damaged. We saw it too. Yeah, saw so it. so <laughs> whether that's going to be useful ongoing. Yeah, uh, we saw it. Current crumpled. Yeah. Today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where was that? It was at Ed Union School. Um, it was damaged this winter. Oh. It was one they, of the big wind storms we had. They are getting a new one with their grant, and mm -hmm. it's a, a larger one, which will hopefully, they're, it's going to have some concrete blocks, which will hopefully prevent that from happening. Mm -hmm. When it gets fired up, it's it's really windy out there. I don't know if it was an everyday thing or it was, it, very, it windy. was very windy. And yeah, people keep, kept warning me like about greenhouses flying away here, and I was like, oh, that's probably not a huge problem. Horse barns fly away. Like a whole hay barns fly away. A whole yeah. barn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In pieces, but you know, some parts. Yeah. You know, huh. Dorothy effect where you get. <laughs> <laughs> Six miles down the valley over the ten. And usually those are private builders that do that though too. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And usually <laughs> new private builders yes. are to turn it the wrong way. It's like, yeah. no, what are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> you're the wind blows here. <laughs> so oh, five. Five. Your last year we had a massive windstorm that knocked toppled trees all mm -hmm. throughout the entire oh, yeah, county. Yeah. Do, do you remember what was that March or March. Last, last year? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> Summer Lake was with that power for what a week? Or a couple days, I think, and it took the trees out of the rest area. Yeah. My. Mm -hmm. Took across them. <coughs> trailers over. That's always fun because, you know, it usually does a barrel roll. It's not just like a tip. It's like. Oh, it's taped down. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> For a day or two, there are winds, I think, were what, to, up to 80 or 90 knots in some parts of, of the county. Mm -hmm. uh, so. 
It was interesting. So yes, went to Canada later. Yes. <laughs> and other things. Um, so another thing is, so since we um, we did take in some money from the Sinai Exchange, and we're hoping to continue doing that to fund the garden. So. Uh -huh. We are looking for um, someone to act as a treasurer for this group who could track those funds. So um, right now, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Chip is kind of going to hold them um, in an account, um, so kind of like a bank. And we could get a bank account too. I mean, mm -hmm. so that's yeah. another option. Yeah. Might be a good idea. Yeah, I think yeah. it would be. Yeah, I mean, be a really good idea. I, my, the my only thing about that is if, because for grants, since Chip is the fiscal sponsor, since it's not an official mm -hmm. 501c3. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but can't you do Friends of Oregon Pound Back Food Initiative or some cute little name that's like. I think there's a way around it. I um, think there is. But I'll ask Cheryl, because it's true, if through the yeah. grant, that's Chip. True. And we're using the 501c3 number of the hospital. Yeah. That might be challenging. However, we do need a treasure because that'll also kind of have someone show the accountability of, of the numbers, which will help with that whole collaboration kind of effort that people are having roles and involved in it. Well, if I was to become a treasurer, how yes. would I know the information? I mean, come to meetings, right? If you come to meetings, every money that would come in and out would be through you. You would be community. You would keep, um, maybe like if you know how to use Excel, an Excel sheet mm -hmm. of money that goes in and out. Um, you'd keep receipts. Um, and maybe you do some reports to the group every now and then, not, you know, every meeting. Right. But um, that would be something that you would be in charge of, and it's not difficult. I mean, we're not dealing with a lot right now. It's right. like a hundred and something. Yeah. Later, when we have grants, it might be more. Um, but I think that's an, an important role, um, mm -hmm. so that we have transparency and involvement with the group. Yeah, I think it's just it's good to have you know a person who is tracking the expenses right now. I have the proceeds from the sign-on exchange in my closet. Oh, you it's, still have it there? Yeah, <laughs> so I would like to have that somewhere more official and in the fanny documented. Pack? Yeah, it's in my fanny pack. <laughs> um, so Which is we're green with white stripes if you go to her closet. Yeah, <laughs> so, but I wouldn't be in charge of the money. I mean, I wouldn't have it in my closet, would I? No, no. No, so Good. yeah, we're just we're still working on setting up, you yeah. know, it being held in an official place, but we're just wanting um, someone yeah. to do the tracking so that that's transparent to the group about how money is that's good. being spent and how much. <coughs> and actually, since I work here, I can get, you and I can get together and yeah, let each good. other know or whatever that way, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is that something you're interested in? Well, I would just say, yeah, because if nobody else wants to do it, somebody's got to do it. Yeah. Okay. But but you have to leave me by the hand because I've never done it before. Okay. But other than that, <coughs> sure. yeah, I'll do yeah. it. Yeah. That's, thank you so much. That's yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, so we have our treasure. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll keep you, yeah, because we, we do see each other pretty frequently. Yeah, so. that's what I was thinking. I may not be able to okay. come to a full meeting, but I, I am in contact with you guys, so. Yeah, maybe we can have a yeah. little meeting um, in the next few weeks about it. Okay. Chat. Yeah. Okay. Figure out where the money is officially going to be. Yeah. But i got to go back to work. Okay. 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 Right. Well, thank you for coming by. Yeah. Yep. That was fun. And volunteering. Yeah. <laughs> I like doing that, so that was, that was fun. All right. Bye. 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 Yeah, let me know. I'll get in touch with you. Okay. I'll, I'm around. Okay. All right. Thank you. Very cool. Bye. Great. Okay, so we got that figured out. Um, and I kind of, so I'm trying to decide what we should establish as the timeline for reopening this garden. Um, so I know in the past they started planting in there in June. Um, so if we want to try to open that in June, we could set that as an ambitious goal, um, but I think it could work because it doesn't need as much um, done. So what do you guys think? 
So what the, the plots you mean or? Yeah, so um, opening the um, garden. Yeah, in June for, for plots. So what is going to be required to prepare for that? Um, so all of the overgrown stuff is going to need to be pulled out. out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's That could be like a big work day. Yeah. And maybe get some barbecue. I would say high school students. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Barbecue's good too. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think, don't they have to do service as part of their graduation requirement? Perhaps, I don't know. Yeah. And the groups that you should reach out to are actually the 4-H groups because they are particularly involved in community service and always looking for projects to be involved in. Mm -hmm. Particularly as they come down to the end of the year and realize they have to fulfill That's all of their, their requirements. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Okay. Um, so that needs to be done. Um, it also depends on what level of things we want to provide. So like, are, if we're wanting to provide seeds or like plants, or if we're just saying, here's a plot of land, you figure the rest yeah. of it out. You know, it, it differs depending on the community garden. I think from the experience, although it's an urban setting, so it's different, I need like input, um, the, the cleanup day is a day of celebration and mm -hmm. um, can be used to promote it and even can be used as like a fundraiser. So you get food, you all work, Mm -hmm. together, break bread together, and um, and then I think I think maybe providing soil, some fresh top soil, if right. you can buy that or have it donated. Well, I'm, I know um, a lot of people have mentioned that there are ranchers who would donate manure. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's aged manure that mm -hmm. would be safe to use or that we Depends. could use in the future. Right. Right. Everything's available. So I know that's something that could probably come through a local um, donation. Yeah. I'd also like to get straw or some other kind of mulch to cut down on weeds and water use. Uh -huh. um, so I don't know if there's any local sources for straw or mulch. Or we so, probably know about that. I'm sure you could help us with that. Um, my question is also, <clears throat> so I don't know a lot about the mill, but do they produce like excess like wood chip type waste? Yes, but it is going to be going towards Red Rock if that comes toward to the, fruition. Is it the biomass? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, they hope it. I mean, there's still contractual right. parts that are being worked out, but they hope that. Uh, they can break ground sometime this spring or summer to establish mm -hmm. that plant to be operational by 2017. Once it is operational, Collins Pine will be selling their mill excess to Red Rock for to produce uh, jet fuels. Mm -hmm. But still, it'd be such a small amount. Well, I, I'm it's sure I'm sure you, you can talk to, to people and, yeah. and get. But I'm just saying there'd be a small amount that you guys would need right. to. Well, but it sounds like maybe they wouldn't actually be getting it till twenty. Tw yeah, that's twenty seventeen. Yeah, right. yeah. So yeah. we could maybe get in there the last sure. time. Oh, yeah. Uh, you should talk to Lee Flutter Johan over at Collins Pine. He would be the the contact person. Lee oh. L E E. Well, I know, but Flutter. <laughs> F L E D D E R J O H A N N. Yeah, you the should person. be attending all of. Yeah, it's very helpful meetings. because you know everything yeah. that's happening in town. It's my job as a reporter to know yeah. everything that's happening in town. Someday we will have a life. Just not yet. <laughs> so that's that was just interested. an idea. I saw that there were some other mill towns in Oregon when I was doing research who get um, wood waste from um, mm -hmm. local mills. And Collins Pine is a company, it's a family owned operation, they own a bunch of mills all, all over, but they are very community oriented, they're always into making donations and they run a trust, uh, Collins McDonald Fund, that helps out with local education and other projects, so they they're definitely would have interest in any community oriented operation, you just need to communicate with them what your goals are and right. what parameters they have. Yes. Even True Value might donate mm -hmm. such tools. Another thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk to Dan Henderson. And that's how you really start getting that momentum, is when little 
stores and stuff like where bloomers may have seeds or some other place I don't know some nursery might want to but we want it organic yeah so that might be an issue I, don't know. I was just interviewing bloomers yesterday uh, talking with Darcy and Tammy uh, they have a greenhouse as well and mm -hmm. I did ask them if they rent out space but their concern about it is um, uh, possibility of disease or anything else kind of coming in with their crops so mm -hmm. they're very protective of their greenhouse space mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't mean that they're not into possibly donating some content at some point if you talk to them about it mm -hmm. and another thing also the, the prison gardens used to start the seeds um, from the previous community garden that was run by rotary um, but they were worried that that interfered with their non-competition clause for local businesses because there are two garden nurseries and they weren't sure whether or not they would be able to do that in the future. Um, but they didn't say no, They just he just said he would need to talk to someone higher up about it. Because um, I guess they, because they're not a business, have a mm -hmm. clause to not compete with places like Bloomers or the Greenhouse. Mm -hmm. But we wouldn't, if we were asking for a donation, it wouldn't really be competitive, right? I, I, I think it would just depend on okay. how they saw it. It's an idea. Okay. Yeah. Well, because tech, you know, technically, someone could come to us, get a free start because we're giving, get free plant starts because we're giving them a way to try to encourage gardening, and then not go buy them at Bloomers. This is true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so lots to think about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's see if I. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to give some updates on um, what I've done been doing lately with the community food assessment. Um, so so far I have ninety consumer surveys for the county. Um, I'm still trying to get that up, but. Um, putting it online was really popular. A lot of people filled it out. Um, still, it's so I've given it out in Paisley and Christmas Valley and Plush, and I've gotten the ones from Christmas Valley back. Um, but I'm still looking for new ways and places to give those out. Yeah, well, could you put them out there? Um, we can membership lots if you want. We're doing it through chip. Sure, so would you want the online version or would you want mm -hmm. papers? Okay. Mm -hmm. Definitely have more access to that. Just make sure you have a where you want it sent back to or dropped off. Because mm -hmm. I know well, so it's it's just it's an online survey, so they'll fill it. Oh, know, like survey monkey link. or something? Yeah, it's okay. not survey monkey, but, but yeah. But like that. But like that, so it'll just, yes. Yeah. I mean, did you do with social media? Mm -hmm. Well, I posted it on the Outback Food Initiative. So <coughs> I didn't get a lot of responses there. I posted it on Lakeview Downtown, um, mm -hmm. and a lot of a couple of people shared it, and a lot of people filled it out that way. What about the hospital? Okay. Actually, I have access to that. Okay. I'll make sure that that's cool. Right, I wasn't sure about that. Well, let's do that. Also, the Lakeview announcements has over a thousand people following that account. That would be a large one. We posted mm -hmm. that one often through the newspaper. Oh. We, we get the most response from it. It's a Facebook group. Are you utilizing SurveyMonkey for these surveys or some other um, source? I'm or? using Google Forms. SurveyMonkey, okay. they only allow 10 questions on the oh, okay. form, so I decided to use Google Forms. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been good. Um, I did the pantry survey here in Lakeview, and then it was given out in Paisley um, with someone I've been working with there, and she said she thought 100% of their clients had filled it out. Um, but I haven't seen them yet. But the ones that were done in Lakeview, a lot of people said they were really interested in gardening. Mm -hmm. um, so. okay. And then, um, so you yeah, sure. And then, I don't know if there's any other places where like the where paper surveys could go. Um, it's always interested in that. Doctor's offices. Do you to do while you're sitting around? Yeah. That's true. I'd read magazines you're afraid to touch but somebody else coughed on them. So. Uh -huh. That's totally me. <laughs> <laughs> I just sit there like that. I know. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and then I think, um, I know you probably remember this, I don't know, um, 
Chris, do you remember the feast event that was held in um, Lakeview last spring? Um, there's going to be a condensed version of that event. It's called a community conversation in Paisley um, on April 18th. So it's going to be, instead of having like all of the speakers, it's going to be more of just like a focus group and kind of like sitting around and talking about what the biggest challenges are um, in Paisley for things like food access and nutrition and gardening and what people would want to see. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to do something similar in Christmas Valley. Where and what time? Sorry. Um, that's on April 18th um, and the Paisley School Cafeteria at 6. Um, we're still working out some of the details for that as far as like, what kind of food. What would you call it? Conversation? Like? It's a community, community conversation. conversation. And that's another one of Oregon Food Bank's uh, event models, like the feast. Are you not doing one here because we did a feast last spring? Mm -hmm. And so the, the first meeting that was held for the Outback Food Initiative in November was considered the feast follow-up event, and then that's kind of just turned into this group, so that's why oh. there hasn't been one okay. here since there already was one. Mm -hmm. And the community conversations are just what they, what work better for smaller communities. Because a feast is like an all day event and gotcha. you have a panel um, and it's just more involved than, than really works for somewhere like Paisley or Fishman Valley. Okay. Especially to ask people to be somewhere all day. And that's really, those are all the CFA updates except that I'm always looking for ranchers to talk to if anyone wants to refer ranch owners in the area. For the conversation or for the meetings? Or um, for me to interview. <clears throat> but if they're in the Paisley area, also for the conversation. Yeah, so unless anyone has anything else they want to talk about, that's all I had on the agenda. Okay. I'm dead. Oh, <laughs> I'm ready to go. Good.